This video continues on from the last one in my series of videos looking at a ceiling rose and a switch, where we had the two plate method wired within the ceiling rose, and we took the feed to the switch, and then obviously the switching line neutral and CPC back to the lighting point, and we future-proofed it. We future-proofed it by removing the twin and CPC, which historically goes from the switch to the lighting point, and we replaced it with a three core and CPC. So when we were at the light, we actually could get a permanent line connection, meaning that in this system, if somebody unscrewed it, I wanted to extend a circuit, say into a roof space, or maybe they've had a, a dining room added to the building, in. they went to that lighting point and wanted to take the line neutron CPC to continue the lighting circuit on, they can now because obviously that three core brings that permanent line connection in. If you haven't checked out that video, I'll leave it in the eye above my head so you can see what we did to get to this stage. The question that came up though was, could we use that switch, Gary, they've used in other videos, which means that we can locate the neutral not inside the Wago 221 connector, but actually on the back of the switch. This switch we've used a few times on the channel. It's got the, the one-way and two-way connections if you want to make it a two-way switch, uh, along with the common. So if you use common and the one-way, it becomes a one-way switch. But it's got this other mystery terminal, which is called loop, and we've discussed previously how we think that's probably poorly worded. This is a terminal that isn't physically connected to any of the other terminals in the switch. So we can use this for our connections for our neutral. So I was asked, can I swap this switch over with this method in order that you use the one I've used in a previous video? Well, the answer is obviously yes. So what we're gonna to have to do, we're gonna to have to just of all work out what we've got here. We've got two cables into common because that is our permanent line in on our twin and CPC, as well as our three core, which now takes the line up to the light point that wasn't there previously at the start of the video that I made before this. We've got a black switching line conductor out of L1, and we've got our two neutrals inside of our Wago connector, which we want to get rid of now. And our CPCs are connected into the back of the box, which is fully insulated and they're there in case we ever change it over for a metallic switch, which is an exposed conductive part. So I was asked, how am I going to make those connections? Well, let's start off by doing the neutrals. They're the ones we want to get rid of. So we pull our neutrals out of the way. They're not doubled over at the moment, so I will double those over in order to go into that switch. You'll notice I'm not using a knife. I used a knife a lot when I was at college. I left college some years ago, so I can use some better kit now. But if you're still using a knife, it's still fine. Just be careful not to fracture the copper. So I'm going to double these ones over so they can go into that loop terminal of that switch. It's a switch made by Schneider Electric. They also make a Hager version of the same switch that has that additional terminal in it. So you can put some connections in and those connections being the neutral. They're not actually connected to the switch because it would go bang. They are there for connecting things such as our neutrals. So we'll put our neutral connection in there. I'm just going to tighten that one up. So they go into that loop terminal. So what else have we got then? So we've got our neutrals got rid of, so that's the connector gone. We've now got to work out what's next. CPCs are staying where they are. So let's start next with the switching line, which is our black conductor. So take out our switching line conductor. We transfer that across. We can use a two-way switch as a one-way switch. And that's what we will be doing here. So we've got common and I'm looking for one-way. It isn't marked as L1 this time. It's marked as a one-way. So that makes it nice and easy for us to put that connection in there. So that's the switching line connection. So that's the black one now of this three core. Remember to check out that previous video if you're all a little bit lost at this stage. I'll try and leave it in the eye above my head at some point during this video. So there we go, that's our switching line. And then we've got our two line connections, line in and line out. So we're gonna bring that one out and that's gonna go in the common of this Schneider switch. So take those two out and they're gonna go into the common. And all it means now is we've got rid of that Wago 221. Some people don't like connector blocks floating around in the back of light switches, and these switches are ideal for it. So there we go. So let's have a look at what we've done here. So we've got our line in and our line up to our light fitting to future-proof it. We've got our switching line, so we have control over it when we operate the switch. We turn it switching line on here, and we've removed our Wago 221 and we've made our neutral connections in this loop terminal, which is 
quite unique to this switch, but Hager also make one as well that has a blank terminal, which you can use for your neutrals. So what we've got then is, as we look at our light fitting, we've got our permanent line, which comes from our common of our three core, so we've future-proofed our light fitting. We've got our switching line, so we have control over our light fitting. Remember, we would normally have the two flexes on the outside for switching line and neutral. We've got our gray neutral here, which is now in this loop terminal with a neutral that fed the switch. This is using the two plate method from the previous video where the feed goes into the switch and from the switch we go to the light point and we've got our connections for our CPC. So yeah, if you wanted to get rid of the Wago 221 and you were uh, more comfortable with this kind of switch, you can obviously use the loop section for the neutral. I think this is future proof both ends. So if you wanted a smart switch down here, You've got a neutral, often smart switches need neutrals, and that was the premise of the first video before this one. And then we future-proof the lighting point because we've got a permanent line, neutral and switching line and CPC. So if we wanted to take a feed into the other room, we take the line, neutral and CPC to the next location, and we can select to use either the two plate method of wiring lights or the three plate method. And we've looked at those both very extensively on the channel. So that just answers that question. Can I use the switch, the, the Schneider switch that I've used before that has a neutral connection in order to future proof it? And the answer for that was yes. But as always, I hope this video has been some help.